Hi folks, in this particular video I'm going to take two photos of the same object in space using two different telescopes. The first one is a very affordable, lightweight, smart telescope which would fit in your shopping bag. And the second one is my dedicated 18mm telescope with a dedicated astrophotography camera. Let's go! I'll compare the pictures taken with each of the telescopes at the end of the video so you can decide which picture you like best. Let me know if you think my expensive astrophotography rig is worth the extra investment and effort. The object I'm trying to capture tonight is the beautiful Veil Nebula. You'll find it in the constellation Cygnus high in the summer and autumn skies of the northern hemisphere. This breathtaking deep sky object is a remnant of a massive star that exploded as a supernova about 8000 years ago. What makes the veil so special is its delicate filamentary structure. The shock waves from that ancient explosion are still plowing through space, lighting up the surrounding gas in ribbons of red and blue. When we image it, we often talk about the eastern and western veil nebula, and these are simply two large brighter arcs of the same expanding shell stretched across a region of sky about six times the diameter of the full moon. Tonight, I'll attempt to image the west part of the Veil Nebula. So obviously, these two telescopes are quite different. The Seastar S30 is great for some casual astrophotography, whereas I can go into full nerd mode with my dedicated astrophotography setup. In some ways, these two telescopes are more alike than you think. Both are apochromatic refractors, but the Seastar S30 is much smaller with just a 30mm aperture and a 150mm focal length, giving it a fast f5 ratio. On my main Astro rig, you'll find my 18mm flat field refractor with a 600mm focal length at f7.5. So the S30 originally came with this mini tripod, which is great, but um, as you can see on my t-shirt here, I'm not getting any younger. So I bought a bigger tripod uh, with an additional wedge to use the Seastar S30 in equatorial mode. Links are in the description below if you're interested. I'll use an EQ wedge with my Seastar S30 to put it in EQ mode so I can track the night sky up to one minute per photo and avoid field rotation. For my Astro rig, I rely on the AM5 harmonic drive mount with guiding, which can push the exposure time to an incredible 5 minutes per photo if everything goes as planned. What's interesting is that despite the size differences, they actually cover a pretty similar patch of the night sky. My expensive Astro rig uses a ZWO ASI 2600 Mono Pro astrophotography camera with a huge 26 megapixel sensor, which gives me a field of view of about 2.24 by 1.5 degrees. The Seastar S30 uses a much smaller 2.1 megapixel IMX 662 sensor, giving it a field of view of about 1.5 by 2.30 degrees. So I really love that I can connect wirelessly to both these telescopes. So for the Seastar S30, there is a dedicated Seastar app you can use to control the telescope. I'm using an ASI Air Plus on my dedicated astrophotography rig to control the entire rig wirelessly from my smartphone, which is great. Where things really diverge is in image scale. With my rig, each pixel represents about 1.3 arc seconds of the sky. On the C star, that number jumps to almost 4 arc seconds per pixel. So if everything goes as planned, my expensive Astro rig should capture nearly 4 times the level of detail as compared to the much more affordable C star S30. To capture the light from emission nebulas like the Veil Nebula, I'll use my C star S30's built-in dual band filter. On my Astro rig, I rely on a dedicated electronic filter wheel with a separate 7 nanometer H alpha and O3 narrowband filter. That way, I can isolate the nebula's striking red hydrogen and vivid cyan oxygen glow. All right, so let's hope for some clear skies tonight so I can get this show started.
So with the Seastar S30 in EQ mode, I experimented with different exposure settings and unfortunately at 60 second exposures, the Seastar app just dropped too many frames. So I ended up using 30 second exposures instead for the Veil Nebula. By the way, if you're interested in a walkthrough video about how to connect and how to use the Seastar S30 or S50, which is very easy by the way, I have some dedicated videos about that on my channel, so please check them out. As for my main Astro rig, I captured five minute exposures using HA and O37 nanometer narrowband filters. And of course I stacked and processed everything in PixInsight using RC Espros, Blur X, Noise X and Star Exterminator. I think these are excellent tools if you're serious about astrophotography and well worth your investment. I did run into a minor issue with the ASI Air Plus. I tried to connect to my home network using station mode, but no matter what I tried, I couldn't get it connected. So I ended up running back and forth to the Astro rig to check out the progress. Anyway, are you ready for the big reveal? Let me know what you think and clear skies.